Oh, these are some nice hammers. Gotta get me one of these. Do some good construction work with these right here. Yeah, get me one of these. What's up, y'all? How's it going? It's me, Mr. Cleo. And listen, it's time for our memory verse. Now, question, how many of y'all have memorized the memory verse already? Well, listen, if you haven't, it's all good. I got a challenge for you. First off, before I give you your challenge, let's remember, be reminded of what the memory verse is. The memory verse comes from 2 Peter chapter 1, verse number 3. And it says that God's power has given us everything that we need to live a godly life. Now listen, that's not too bad of a memory verse. It's not too long. It's not too short. It's just right. But here's your challenge. What I want you to do is every morning when you wake up out of your bed and you're stretching, you yawn, and you go into the bathroom to brush your teeth, right before you brush your teeth, I want you to practice this memory verse. And I want you to try it every single day. And by Friday, I want you guys to try it without looking. That's the goal. Are you up for the challenge? Here we go. Let's try the memory verse one more time to make sure you guys got it. Second Peter chapter one, verse number three. God's power has given us everything that we need to lead a godly life. That's right. I know you guys got it. I believe in you guys. I know y'all can do it. Memorize that memory verse. Hide it in your heart because it's the best place to hide it. See you guys later. I see y'all. If you got joy, make some noise. Woo! It's been a long day of working. What's going on, y'all? Hey, listen, it's me, Mr. Cleo, and you know me. I got a story for you guys. So listen, one day, long time ago, when I first started my construction career, I used to have this supervisor, and when I tell you guys she was mean, she was mean. I mean, she made my life so difficult. Every day I came to work. Cleo, go do this. Cleo, go do that. Cleo, don't go there. Cleo, don't go there. Cleo, wake up. 
I wasn't even sleeping. I was just resting my eyes. But either way, she would make everything so hard, and she would be so, so mean to me. I would never like going to work. I would dread going to work because I knew that she would be there. But guess what? One day, I'm out on the construction site, and I'm doing all my construction things. I got my tools on, and I'm, I'm jamming out to my music, and I'm having a good time. And I hear this yelling, help, help, help. And I'm like, hmm, there's nobody else here but me. Who is screaming for help? So I started to look around for this sound, and I kept hearing it, help, help. Help! And y'all, I came across this big old hole in the ground at the construction site. And I kept hearing the noise. Help! Help! So I walk over, and I look down into this hole, and guess who was in the hole? It was my supervisor. Y'all, she had slipped and fell down in the hole. And she was in there, and her clothes were all dirty, and she was crying, and she was upset, and she was frantic, and she was panicking. And I thought to myself serves her right but I only thought it I didn't say it out loud so in that moment God came to me and he said Cleo stop and think man what's the right thing to do and I said God she's so mean to me I know you want me to help her but I don't want to and he said Cleo what would my son Jesus do and I said Oh, man, you're right. So I went and got a ladder, put it down in there, and I helped her on out. And it made me think of a Bible uh, story. Once upon a time in the Bible, in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 24, King David was in the same situation. Now, before he was a king, he used to work for another king named Saul. And Saul kept trying to take David out. And one day, Saul was in a cave, and David saw him in the cave, and David could have took Saul's life, but he chose not to. And what he did was he cut the back of King Saul's, uh, his, his, his outfit, and he said, Saul, I could have took your life, but I chose not to because I love God and I love you. And it made me think back to the situation with my supervisor. I realized I had to think before I acted, just like King David did when he could have took Saul's life. So what are you guys going to do? Are you guys going to just be upset with people and treat them mean and nasty just because they treat you mean and nasty? Or are you going to think before you act? What would Jesus do in these situations? So remember, when you're at school or when you're on the playground or when you're with your sports teams, just because somebody treats you nasty doesn't mean you have to do the exact same thing. Think before you act so that you can show other people how Jesus would act. All right, guys, that's my story for today. I will see you guys later. Remember, think before you act. Woo! Hey! <laughs> I love these little guys. Hey, wasn't that a great story, you guys? Listen, that story reminds me of King David in 1 Samuel chapter 24, where he could have took Saul's life. The king, right? This was before David actually became king, and Saul was treating him so, so bad. He could have took his life. He could have did all these nasty things, but he thought before he acted. And I want you guys to be just like me in my story with my supervisor. Think before you act. I know sometimes people don't treat us right, and we want to do them the same way they do us, but what would Jesus do? What would Jesus have us to do in those situations to where people can see his kind of love? What do you want us to do is we want us to think before we act. Say it with me, guys. Think before we act. Because of that, I want to pray with you guys so that when you guys go throughout this week, you'll be prepared and ready to think before you act so that you can show somebody else God's kind of love. You ready? Let's do it. Heavenly Father. Please help me and all my friends to think before we do something foolish. God, we don't want to make people feel unloved or unappreciated, but we want them to, to, to know that you love them and we want to be a representation of your love. So help us to think before we act. In your son Jesus name we pray. Amen. Hey, I will see you guys later. I'm going to get back to these little old guys here. <laughs>